If you're making homemade hand sanitizer to prevent against cold, flu, and COVID-19, I'm sharing the facts you need to know and the correct way to do it. I'm Jessica DeLuise. I'm a physician assistant and certified culinary medicine specialist. This is how you eat your way to wellness. Okay, so here's what you need to know. The CDC tells us that hand sanitizers need to be greater than 60% alcohol by volume. A lot of people are not getting this correct concentration when they're making homemade hand sanitizer. So I'm gonna share how you can do this correctly. Before we hop into hand sanitizer, let's remember the basics. Washing your hands is the gold standard. So in as hot of water as you can tolerate for 20 seconds and then let them dry for 20 seconds, that's the gold standard. And of course, limit contact with people and limit touching your face, like your eyes and your mouth. Of course, supporting your immune system with foods that are rich in vitamin C and zinc, so fruits, vegetables, quality fats and proteins, those are gonna be the best way to protect yourself. But in addition to all of that, if you want to make hand sanitizer at home, here is how you do it. 3% hydrogen peroxide, more than 90% of isopropyl alcohol. Now, if you're only finding the 70%, I'll tell you how to use that in a second, but for the hand sanitizer, you really need the greater than 90% by volume isopropyl alcohol. Plus a sanitized little container to put it all in, and a vehicle so that way it takes your skin a little bit more easily, like glycerin or aloe vera gel. Plus optional, you can add essential oils if you want for fragrance. Of course, we don't know how effective these are at being antimicrobial, so don't do that just for the antimicrobial benefit. If you want it to smell nice, add your essential oils. If you have the 70% by volume isopropyl alcohol at home, you can certainly use it, but you cannot use it in the hand sanitizer. Once you add the other ingredients, it's gonna be far too diluted to be effective. So instead, put it into a spritz bottle and spray it on your hands, and that way you're getting some antimicrobial benefit. However, this can be super harsh and drying, so just do this method at your own risk, okay? Now, a lot of people are swapping in vodka to hand sanitizer. Now, vodka does have an antimicrobial effect, but you also wanna make sure, just like with your alcohol, you have the proper percentage of alcohol. So you really need more than 60%. What does that mean? Well, you take the percent alcohol and you double it to get the proof. So for example, this is only 80 proof alcohol, so 40% alcohol. This would not be strong enough to go into your hand sanitizer. Of course, there's no guarantee that this is gonna be effective, but a lot of people are doing it and they're doing it incorrectly, which is why I'm sharing my recipe. So let's make hand sanitizer. First, into our food processor, we're going to add one tablespoon of aloe vera gel. I just cut this out from an aloe vera leaf, but you could use any aloe vera gel that you have at home. Next, one tablespoon of hydrogen peroxide. Now, it is so important to measure your ingredients, so you make sure that you have the appropriate concentration of everything. One cup of greater than 90% isopropyl alcohol and any essential oils that you choose. I'm gonna use lime. Blitz it for a second. And that's it. So you carefully pour it into your bottle. So here is your homemade hand sanitizer. You can make a big batch and put it into smaller containers, hand it out to your friends and family. But just one more tip before we close out today. If you have vodka at home that might not be appropriate for hand sanitizer, just a reminder that it is good enough for a cocktail. So stay well, everybody. And for more tips and videos and ways to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, visit eatyourwaytowellness.com. Cheers.